We have two affordable Civivi knives. They just dropped. Everything will be linked down in the description. And I honestly think that these are probably the best new affordable knives that you could buy right now. And I'm hoping, and we're going to talk more about this here in a little bit. I'm really hoping that this is the future of affordable knives. And I, I truly think it's going to be. Just FYI, I might post this video a couple hours before they actually drop. However, you can still purchase them. If you use the link down in the description, they'll be available. It's just they're probably going to say pre-order or something like that. But just know that when I'm posting this, they are dropping within an hour or two. So it, they are available. It's just, you know, it might be a little bit early just to give you guys a heads up so you guys have, you know, a fighting chance because I do have a feeling that these are going to sell out. I don't know how many they made, so maybe they won't. Maybe they have a ton of them. I don't know. Starting it off, we have the Civivi Vision FG, which is the affordable version of the Vision R, which is a Snex design. And this is a premium version, titanium, 20 CV. It has the Snex Super Lock. And it's really awesome. It's very unique. It's different. But this since it's the second version, since you know they kind of get to, to clean up anything that maybe people weren't too happy with about this one, they absolutely did with this one. And I would have to argue that this is better than this. I, I'm sorry, I have to argue that. Uh, uh, aside from the materials, this is hands down better. We're gonna go over the reasons why. So first, let's go over the materials. So we have Nitro V Steel. And the sheep's foot blade, beautiful geometry, beautiful sharpening tool and plunge grind, also acts as a finger choil. This one's G10, but there's a, plenty of other options. Just like always, Civivi always has different flavors, different materials. Um, this one's the G10, but there is micarta. The Super Lock, starting it off right away. The Super Lock is better on the affordable version. So if you look at the premium version, it was just a nub. With this one, it's actually jimped and it's more proud. You actually can feel the jimping. It's very easy. It almost feels like a button on this one. This one, you feel like you're slipping off. Like it, it feels like you're, you're trying to get it. You know, you're, and you're like in the middle of trying not to slip off while also grabbing it. With this one, there, it's effortless. You just pull it down, kind of like a shark lock. Um, then the detent. The detent on this is, let's look at this, the, the original one. It's so easy to whip out. Like it, it's, it's very light as far as the detent goes with this one. It's probably three times stronger. Um, now I'm not saying it's a super strong detent or anything like that, but it's 100% stronger than this one. Next thing, the clip. The clip is actually a regular clip instead of this next clip. Some people like it, some people don't, but you know, it is different. And one thing is in the hand, it's not the most comfortable. You do feel it. If you choke up, you don't, but back here you do. But as far as carrying it goes, you know, you gotta slip it in and kind of turn it in the pocket. And to some people, it's just not natural, especially as natural as a regular pocket clip. So this is inset, as you can see, and reversible. Now, I do have some complaints about this. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but the action, because they tuned the detent stronger, and now we have thumb studs instead of the hole. Now, the hole would have been fine if the detent was strong, but the detent's not strong. So, you know, it just kind of flops. Like, that's the way it kind of feels. It's not as satisfying because there's not a click, and the hole is very tight to get to. Now, I love this knife, so I, I'm not trying to drag it or dog on it. I like the knife, but this is better. Uh, the thumb studs make it to where you can apply more pressure, get more leverage, and because the spring or the detent or what acts as the detent is stronger, it makes it to where it's a lot snappier, a lot more satisfying, and then coupled with the textured lock, it makes it to where it's so much more satisfying, and you can always use that as the deployment method. And you can hear the lock, it really snaps in place, also, you don't have to worry about pulling this lock out. So the original one was made to come out so that you could clean it and stuff like that. Even though you do have the hole right there where you can kind of stick a Q-tip or something in there if you really needed to and you can get to the lock face right there, it would still pop out sometimes when you're in the middle of fidgeting. This, they put a stop or a pin back here. So when you pull back, it hits that pin so it can't pull out. So that's cool. Um, and it still has the hole for you to kind of clean it out if you wanted to. Uh, really quick, the way the lock works is it has just a little spring down here, as you can see, 
and the spring pushes up with this bar and the bar wedges in between this groove right here when it opens up in between the stop in. So the pressure, in order to fail, it has to break this piece of hardened steel and a hardened steel stop pin. All in all, it's a great knife and I love that it's different. You know, it's not the same thing we've been seeing. Uh, of course, you know, this next uh, vision are, you know, that's the way this was. And I'm really enjoying seeing these premium designs and premium, these things we see in premium knives come to the affordable range for the people that can't afford the premium ones because they still want to experience some of these awesome locks and awesome features on a knife. Now, the negatives on this before we get to the next knife. I really only have one, and that is this clip placement. Why on earth did they put it on the spine? Take note, every single knife company, please take note. Never, ever, ever put the clip on the spine, center it. Because when you wrap your hand around a knife, this is right here is where the palm right here creases over. So because it creases over right there, now you're creasing over basically like a, a metal wire instead of a nice comfortable chamfered G10 area. Now, is it that bad? Yes and no. If I'm back here, yes, it absolutely is bad. It's a total hot spot. Like it's painful if I'm back here. Like you can even watch. You can see it right there. It's this little corner. However, I'm not really gonna be holding it like that. I would hold it up here. So when I'm doing regular slicing, I, I kind of let it roll right out so it's not that big of a deal. Pinch grips are just fine. And if I really need to choke up and really need to apply the maximum amount of force, I'm not gonna be back here. So, you know, because of that, it's not bad. I, I you know, it, it's a nitpick um, and, you know, luckily, <laughs> Luckily, there's so much room here for you to spread out, so you're not like, you know, you don't have to hold back there. So um, so that would be my one biggest negative is just I wish the, the clip was centered. Um, it would just make it that much more comfortable, um, even though it's not that bad. The next thing is uh, nothing. That, that's it, man. Um, T8 hardware all the way around. Love to see that, except for the clip screws, but it is a T8 on this side for the body screw. Um, it does have a lot of weight relieving, as you can see, you know, with the four holes. So it's not a heavy knife, but it does have a steel liner construction. And this lock is very solid. No play, any direction. Um, I haven't tested its strength, but I imagine it's pretty strong, especially being called the super lock. The next one, Oh, the next one. Oh my goodness, am I loving this one. The Sentinel Strike. This is, <laughs> they basically are taking the premium Xiphius or Exiton, that the style of these knives, and they brought it to an affordable version, which I absolutely love. You can see these are very similar. One's premium, one's affordable. These, there is still some of these left. I'll have them linked down in the description. Not many left, and when they're gone, they're gone, um, unless if they come out with different styles and stuff, but as far as the ones that, that came out with those colors, they're limited. So the blade steel is K110 steel, and the handle is aluminum. The back um, cover here, the integral back spacer is FRN. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then you have a deep carry clip and a glass breaker back here, a nice little ceramic ball as a glass breaker. You have some weight relieving holes here to add you know, a little bit of design to it. Um, and then the, the scales are very solid. Otherwise, it feels very solid. It feels extremely lightweight. Um, but let's talk about this blade because this is a, a fantastic blade for EDC. So you notice this is a Warncliffe. The edge is straight, right? It is a harpoon Warncliffe. Well, this is a Warncliffe too, but it sweeps up. See how the edge sweeps up and it makes it to where you can get this edge onto a surface easier because right here, I can't get it because my fingers are in the way, right? So it makes it to where I can get more edge to a surface without a problem. And I'm not losing my my power in my utility, damn it. I'm not using, I'm not losing my power into my utility cuts. Um, same thing like a Warren clip. Warren clip, that's the beautiful thing about them is you have maximum pressure from here to here. You don't have a loss of pressure, you know, when you're, when you're cutting all the way out to the tip. Now, granted this one's swept up a little bit, so it might 
you know, you might have to kink it like that a little bit to get a perfectly straight edge. But as far as EDC use goes, I'm telling you, this blade shape is amazing. It's somewhat of like a, an in-between. It's a modified sheep's foot, modified Warren Cliff. Call it what you want, but that's what it is. It's a Warren Cliff and a sheep's foot made a baby. Great uh, geometry, phenomenal geometry, great finger choil slash sharpening choil. The action, whoo, the action, the action, man. I'm, like I'm gonna say about the Xiphius, again, we, Civivi, Suncut, have mastered the button lock better than any company that I could think of. Um, nah, nah. So, yes, okay, I'm, I'm gonna stand by that to some extent. There are some other great companies. I mean, Freeman uh, does a really good job with their button lock. Medford does a really good job with their button lock. Protec, really good job with their button lock. Um, so I wanna give them all credit too. But, you know, we, Civivi, and Sencut have, man, I, 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 besides the first one that I had, the first, the first couple I had, I had some issues with over time. Um, but ever since those, like, they all come rock solid. They last, you know, like it seems like I can just beat on them as much. I'm not saying beat on your knives, but it seems that I've really put some work on some of these button locks and they're just holding strong. And I love that because I never would have thought, you know, just because of my experience from other ones, you know, as I used them and I used them and I used them, and I used them. Some of them would wear out. Some of them would start failing. And there's, you know, like I said, I've said this before, not all button locks are created equally, right? So, you know, it's about the lock face geometry. Let's talk about this action. I'm sorry, guys. The thumb studs, very easy to get to, very snappy, very enjoyable, great placement. Then you have this hole, which makes it to where you can get very um, comfortable reverse flick action. You know, and because it's a, it's a thumb stud, thumb studs will always be better for the thumb flick than a hole, so that's cool. Well, f usually for the most part. But you have the beautiful reverse flick, and right or left-handed, this will work equally the same. The only difference is, is you will be pushing with your pointer finger instead of your thumb. Um, so it is ambidextrous. The only thing is, and you know what? I do think the clip is reversible. Yeah, you, yeah, you just unscrew this and then spin it around to this side, I believe. Um, the, the button is inset, so you're not going to accidentally press it. You know, no matter what I do, I'm not going to accidentally press it. You got to intentionally press it to disengage or to engage, you know, if you want to do the button lock swing. Um, the jimping on the flipper tab, extremely, extremely well done. Perfect jimping, very comfortable flipper tab. So great resistance from the detent or what acts as the detent. Like I said, rock solid lockup very ergonomic and because of this blade shape it just it, it complements itself so so well this is an amazing work knife an amazing tool an amazing everything they, they knocked this out of the park now i do have a couple negatives so one negative why did they use k110 why not use nitro v or 14c it's civivi k110 just so everybody knows it's d2 it's just another country's version of D2. There's really no difference. So w as far as I know, we that was for their Sen Cut and uh, that was for their Sen Cut line. You know, not saying they don't have some D2 Civivis, but I thought I thought we were away from that. I thought we were, uh, you know, putting the D2 in the Sen Cut arena. So I don't understand why they didn't do Nitro V or 14C. I would have been really happy with that. Do I still love it? Yes, I do. It's just, you know, just something I would have liked even more. The next thing is this backspacer. While I love the idea and I love it, so I just want to be clear, I love this the way this is done. Um, I loved it on the Xiphius, I loved it on the Exiton, but I don't know why they didn't do G10. You know, and maybe it's because this is molded and G10 is machined. Maybe it has something to do with that. Um, or maybe even an aluminum one. That would have been cool. Um, you know, because this is already aluminum. So, but I will say the FRN does two things. It brings down the weight massively. I mean, this thing is so, so lightweight. And FRN is nothing to slouch at. It's very tough material. I'm just not a fan of it. The way this, you know, is applied, I'm, a, you know, I'm good with it. But as far as FRN knives, I just, I stay away from them. Um, the next thing that it really does is it, it basically locks the two scales together and makes it to where it's it basically is like it's like an integral without being an integral, um, so I can appreciate that. 
The stop pin in the closed position does hit in this area, which it's as long as it's not too close to the edge, I'm okay with it. I prefer it to be down here or an internal stop pin. Um, but you know, it is what it is. They have this stop pin for the open and then this stop pin down here for the close. Luckily, the edge is not too close to it, so you'll get plenty of sharpenings out of it. You'll, you, you won't hit it. You'll be fine. Um, I just worry that I don't want to sharpen my edge 5, 10, 20 times and then, then cut out the area where my stop pin hits, making it to where now I have uh, detent lash and things like that, or maybe it just doesn't close at all. Um, anyways, all in all, Phenomenal knife. Um, I, I'm sure the glass breaker works good. As far as both of these go, let's talk about what I meant about the future really quick. And I kind of already touched on it. I'm really hoping that this is what we see moving forward. And I do think we're gonna. I think they're going to start taking these things that we only see in premium knives and bring them over to, oh, I did find another negative, T6s. Why did you guys do T6s? Why not T8s? Isn't that a T6? That is a T6, right? Let me just make sure before I say the wrong thing. Yeah, T6s. So, okay, that's a little negative. Anyways, <laughs> nitpick, not even a negative. Um, I'm really hoping that this is the future, right? That, that we're, we continue to see the, the premium locks, the premium designs brought to affordable price ranges and, and for people to experience some of these things in an affordable way. Not everybody can afford a $300 knife, you know, or even a $250 knife. You know, people just, they, they can't do it. So it's it's great to see the, the build quality go up like we've been seeing because we got to admit, I mean, a four, we, we, we bitch and moan a lot, right, and from the knife community, you know, but we are really blessed right now. We are in a great place for pocket knives. Pocket knives are better quality than they've ever been in history. Heat treatments are better than they ever have been in history. We're using more steels than we ever have in history. We're using more locks and lock designs and, and have more designers. And so I'm here for it. I love it. And, you know, the, I'm I obviously I know, you know, that's obviously going to be the future moving forward. I think we all know that. And it's welcomed. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, work hard, stay tough. You know society's relying on you. Until next time, peace.